Returning to our program is John M. Fleming, Director of Accounting and Auditing for Lascalzo Associates. Thanks for joining us this month, John. My pleasure, Mike. Thanks for having me. We've heard a lot over the past two years, John, about the AICPA's suite of risk assessment standards. Let me start out with a baseline question. What is risk-based auditing? And does it really differ from traditional auditing approaches? Mike, it probably depends upon how you're defining traditional. If we're thinking of traditional as prior to 1990, there's a different answer than if we're thinking of traditional after 1990. In 1990, uh, the ASB issued SAS 55, Consideration of Internal Control in an Audit. That standard caused many firms to change their approach to auditing. Uh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, we did a lot of control testing. Uh, we did uh, a little bit of substantive testing, a little bit of uh, analytics, but a significant part of our audit approach was testing internal controls. What happened was in the late 80s, companies started to use computers much more extensively. In order to test controls, of course, you would then have to understand the embedded controls that are software controls or the embedded controls that are hardware controls. And as a profession, that meant we had to spend more time understanding those controls. And before that, we really weren't focusing quite as much on that. Uh, what that caused was a significant increase in audit fees in the late 80s. Companies complained about the increase in fees and didn't quite understand what exactly we as auditors were doing. So the Auditing Standards Board took a look at that issue and decided to give accounting firms an option. They could test controls as they had been doing in the past, or they could assess control risk at the maximum, which would suggest that we're not going to test controls. We don't really have to understand controls very well. And we would go do a substantive audit, substantive audit being uh, third-party evidence gathering for the most part. So when we talk about traditional auditing techniques, uh, Pre-1990, we did a fair amount of internal control testing. Post-1990, we did very little internal control testing. What has happened in recent years is the Auditing Standards Board has realized that not doing control testing, or at least not understanding the controls that could mitigate risk of error or fraud, uh, was causing some weaknesses in auditing. Uh, some of the frauds that we're, that were discovered in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, the feeling is if the accounting firm understood their controls better, uh, that could have mitigated some of those activities. So the ASB decided in 2006 that they were going to emphasize risk-based auditing, which incorporates both concerns about the balance sheet as well as concerns about the income statement. Now, the reason that's important for us is if you're not understanding internal controls or if you're not testing internal controls, which is what we've seen in recent years, then most of the work that's being done is work that's being done on year-end balance sheet accounts without giving proper attention to the risk of error or fraud that may be taking place during the period. In other words, 12-month risk was not getting the attention in the most recent traditional approaches uh, as the Auditing Standards Board thought it should. Ergo, we have a whole set of new risk-based auditing standards.